most business people who build one big business are pretty happy with it. You built a Citadel a hedge fund, which is extremely successful. Why did you want to build another business, Citadel Securities? Uh, why did you want to do that and run the risk that you wouldn't be as successful in that business as you were in Citadel Hedge Fund? So, David, I think it's first important to recognize that the hedge fund is comprised of a number of different investment strategies that have been built over now 30 some years. And there's a number of strategies that don't exist today that used to exist where we didn't succeed. So we've always been in the business of building businesses, of building something new. For Citadel Securities, we saw this intersection of the advancement of predictive analytics and the rise of the electronification of markets. We were moving from a world where you would call a broker, who would call for a broker, who would walk to a specialist pit, who would do a trade, to an electronic world of straight through processing trading. In other words, type an order on a computer, boom, it's executed in, in fractions of a second. And we felt in that world, our deep heritage in software engineering and in predictive analytics would let us to be a market maker of the future. And one of my partners who, who recently retired, James Jay, led that charge for years in the origin story of Citadel Securities. And we became one of the largest market makers in U.S. options and U.S. equities. And then under Peng Chao's leadership over roughly the last seven or eight years, we've really grown to be a, a global player. Pung's done an incredible job of building a team of, of incredibly gifted people with software engineering skills, hardware engineering skills, work in machine learning and AI to allow us to manage 25% of the U.S. equity flow every day. And it's an incredible testament to him and his team that they've built so much capability under one roof to be such an important provider of liquidity to retail and institutional investors. Now, Citadel, uh, the hedge fund, is a firm fund I assume you own. You're the principal owner, if not the sole owner of it. And Citadel Securities, you were the principal owner, if not the sole owner of it. But recently, you took some outside capital, which I think is the first time you've taken major outside capital. Is that right? So I'll, I'll just fill in a few blanks there. Okay. So I and roughly 50 people own both Citadel Securities and the hedge fund. Which makes us, what makes us different from many partnerships is that virtually the entire firm is owned by people who are here today. So our retired partners over the years, we've bought their interest back to keep the firm owned by those who are active and engaged in the business today. Now for us, the opportunity to work with Sequoia, and to have Sequoia as an anchor investor in Sill Securities was an incredibly compelling proposition. As you and, I, you and I both know, Sequoia's back some of the great success stories in American technology whether it be Apple or NVIDIA or Google, and to have their expertise and wisdom in helping us think about positioning sales securities for the next decade or two decades or three decades has been a really powerful opportunity for us that we availed ourselves in, in having them as an investor in the firm. Right, now Sequoia usually, it's a great uh, venture firm for sure, but usually at some point they like to take public or liquefy their investments. So. Should anybody think that at some point Citadel Securities might go public? I think that's a reasonable assumption. And one of, the, one of the ingredients that Sequoia brings to the table is helping my management team really understand, as a public company, what will be different than how we run our business today as a private company. And those differences, as you and I both know, will be some will be positive, some will be negative. But we need to understand those differences and embrace those differences if we're going to go public down the road. Now the other partner that you sold a stake to was Paradigm, which is a cryptocurrency related investor. Uh, you haven't been trading, I think, or making markets in crypto. Uh, do you expect to do that in the future? So crypto has been one of the great, great stories in finance over the course of roughly the last 15 years. And, and I'll be clear, I've been in the, in the naysayer camp over that 15 year period of time. But the crypto markets today have a market capitalization of about $2 trillion in round numbers, which tells you that I haven't been right on this call over the course of the last 15 years. I still have my skepticism, but there are hundreds of millions of people in this world today who disagree with that. And so to the extent that we're trying to help institutions and investors solve their portfolio allocation problems, we have to give serious consideration to being a market maker in crypto. 
And I think it's fair to assume that over the months to come, you will see us engage in making markets and cryptocurrencies.